will begin with Rosie Theo Harry, who comes from North Shore in Swampscott, and mm, a number of decades ago came from Albania and moved over here in the 1990s. When growing up, Rosie was brought up out in the mountain and uh, the more rural area of Albania, where she enjoyed spending time with the sheep and the lambs and out in nature. And she noted that books were her best friend back then. She was very interested in being a writer as well as a doctor but pursued writing and studying economy. After receiving her degrees, uh, she began publishing. Uh, and she had about eight books published in Albania before moving, very prolific in her writing. And she was beginning to get attention for the good words that she was th sharing through literature. Rosie noted that her mother was the source of inspiration primarily for her interest in writing as women, uh, specifically mothers in her homeland, were key in sharing songs and ballads and reciting poetry and stories to their children and that this stayed with her and fueled her own interest in, in writing and sharing stories and poetry. And in moving over here in, I believe, 1994, Rosie continued on with writing, and she has to this date 18 books of publication of poetry and stories. <laughs> yes. And I would like to share with you uh, not only in her being published, but she's been the recipient of a number of awards, including the Gold Pen Prize by the Society of Albanian American Writers the Naji Namans Literary Prize in 2006, and four of her books are in the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So, Rosie, uh, one of the many things that she has been praised about is for her celebration of both her original, her homeland of Albania, as well as her celebration of moving to the United States. and. Uh, embracing and celebrating both areas. And I look forward to what she has to share of the people and places that she comes from. And I would like to invite all of you to please give a warm morning welcome to Rosie Theo Harry. I'm Rosie Theo Harry, and I'm glad and honored to be with you today. And I thank Cheryl inviting me today. In my country, we did not have black people. So when I came to America, I was amazed meeting, talking, and be friends with American, African-American. I inspired to write a poem about Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, one voice. Water for white, water for black. People, Mother Nature gave it for how. 25 October 2005. I'm sit on the front seat of the bus from Marblehead to Boston, reading the Boston Globe at the next station. A black woman with big glasses sits near me. She puts her brown finger near my pink one on the newspaper when she reads of Rosa Parks' death. We are both tearful in prayers. In the spectrum of the woman's colorless tear, I can hear. Who are you, Rosa? A colored woman. But I can stop the buses. A woman sat down, and the world turned around. Yet Martin Luther King's dreams remain incomplete. The second I wrote for President Obama, when he became president, the golden epoch. A new immigrant from Albania, I shook hands with black people, they were kind, for the first time in my life in America. I voted for a black governor for the first time in my life in Massachusetts, the Commonwealth, in the 21th century. Yesterday, I voted for Obama, our 44th American president. 
Surreal Day, Mythic Day, Washington DC, January 20, 2009. The trajectory of history removed the slave shackles from Obama's right hand when he took the oath. At noon in America, one journey ended, another began. American eyes shine with Obama's victory in Lady Liberty's torch. All hail to the chief. I, I sent this. Uh, I sent this poem to President after he elected, and he sent me a letter, and I sent another poem, and he sent me another <laughs> letter, <laughs> and and I sent this book because inside there are two or three poems, and he sent a letter with uh, Michelle. So. I'm happy, however. He, he, he fights, he fights. What to do is one, one person. So. When I came in 1994 from Albania, my grandfather came in America in the beginning on 20 century, a young boy from village. And he worked in Maine and in New Hampshire cutting wood. And I was so, so curious to see the mountain, the white mountains of New Hampshire. And I went there in the top. And I inspired to write this poem for my grandfather. My grandfather left the family in 1903 and with nine Albanian village young adults emigrated to Maine. For five years, the ten boys lived and worked in the dense wood without living. The ten Albanian woodcutters became famous for their skills. They were named Maine's horses. Also, they were illustrious at nighttime, playing and chanting folk melodies and forest bird song imitation on woodwind instruments of their creation becoming an extension of the wood itself. From time to time, they came back to Albania to marry or to have children. Unfortunately, in 1962, my grandfather suffered from diabetes and eventually became blind. He insists on returning to Albania, to the village of Darda, hoping that he may see again. In Darda, our family, his old wife, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, greeted him with love and joy. He touched our face and named us. He liked to sit in a chair in front of the woods. He sighed all the time, Maine. Oh, you don't know how beautiful they are, the color of the trees in Maine. I can see them now. He was string and died with the words, Maine, Maine, with tears streaming from his eyes. This is my mother and my father in picture, but they never be together because my mother wait for my father 50 years in Albania. She couldn't come to America because of government communists. So my father was in Detroit, she was in Albania, and she sent to my father 600 letters. And uh, 10, 10, 2010, it was 100th anniversary of her birth. So I wrote this poem for my mother, ded dedicated to her. Ten, ten, ten. I woke up this morning remembering the 100th anniversary of the birth of my late mother. Today, 10, 10, 2010, sitting by the bright Boston Harbor, caressed by the Atlantic's blue waves, 100 seagulls flying over my head. It's been 100 years of my notable life, mother. On this journey of your sentinel, age mate with our mother Teresa, like her and thousands of Albanian women, nurtured by our birthplace tradition of self denial. Oh, my tireless mother, created by work and working to create. 
now I am not reading all, but the first letter, the first letter, number one, 1931. My name, the name of my father is Pandi. Dear Pandi, this is my first letter to you. I don't know what to say. My house you built for me is empty. I touch your violin to feel your fingers. The phonograph you brought me is quiet. No more Foxtrot and Charleston with you. I don't laugh with Chaplin in your projector. My dear husband, today I found in our garden two ripe pears that fell from the trees, one for me and one for you. But where are you? Oh, America, America, far away in the West, you left your brides with hands on their breast. And the 600th letter. My beloved Pandi, God bless you. I have some month, my health on the decline. Beg your pardon for my bad writing. My hand is shaking, my life, a blink of the eye, is going down to her. This is the last letter, nothing left to say, bye. She died after two days, wrote this letter, and we sent to other father. Now, in my country, in my village in Darda, is a, is a special place for tradition of uh, women. Women are very important in education of society, of family, of children, for, for everybody. So, women created a melody, a special melody, like crying for their life. Because today you marry with a man, tomorrow he take a trip for America and come back for three or four or five years or more. So they, like tradition, put on dress, black dress, black headkerchief, black dress. And they never removed this dress until the day husband come back from America. Of course, he, he brought many things, many good, but she had to be in black. And uh, this is a, a short song. Near the church door, you dinging my grave, attracting my husband pray when he passes by. When he passes by, he's going to cry, he's going to cry. Because they wanted husband to be alive, to work and to be happy for family, so they put black dress in their body to be happy husband. Now, when I was little girl, seven years old, I had to learn this melody, and my mother insists every day. It was difficult for me because, you know, with vibration of the voice, I'm singing now this melody. you know, because their life now is nothing, is empty, nothing. So in the bedroom, every woman in the wall take a picture of painting of something, Saint Mary with Christ. And behind this picture, $10. And when, <laughs> when husband coming back, you know, with horses, because in the 
village and children knew about these 10 dollars staying there and who coming the first in this house your husband is coming back your husband is coming back and the lady took these 10 dollars and gave to <laughs> the first <laughs> I, I remember in my house these 10 dollars my mother said don't touch this this is for your father so Inspired from my mother telling story and uh, reciting oral verses from legend, I wrote a poem. The name is Rosafat, and I publish in Romanian language, in Albanian, and in English. The story is about three brothers wanted to build a castle in the top of the hill, and what they built daytime, nighttime, fell down. So one man, old man, coming by said, you have to sacrifice a young woman in the wall. You have to put in the wall a woman, like this, in the wall. And the castle will be strong. Now they were three <laughs> brothers and three wives, who? The first and the second brother told to wife uh, the, the story, but the third, no, he didn't tell. So next day, the third wife with lunch went in the top of the hill and saw she was punished now. The two brothers-in-law said sadly, oh, our honored sister-in-law, you are fated to be walled up now, as the sky did fall upon the ground. She cried, please. At once two men grabbed her body and threw it down upon the black flagstones. Breathing heavily, screaming, imploring, Please, don't cover my right eye. I want to see my son. Don't cover my right hand. I need to curse him. Do pull out gently my right breast. I must feed my little child. Do leave out my right foot so my baby's cradle I can rock. This castle is today in Albania, and all the time the stones are with stalactites, white stalactites. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody said it's the milk of the breast of this young woman. Now I'm reading in Albanian, the same. Dorën e djathë të ohë, jashtë malini, djallin e nënës të përkëdhel, flokët ohë, t'ja lëmoj, dhelet ohë, t'ja kujtoj, gjirin e djathë ohë, me kujdes malini jashtë në bigur, biri nënës ohë, djalli si nur, i dashur i vogël ohë, kur të vi, qumë shtë ngrohët ohë, lipse të pi. And in Romanian. Nu mi acoperi ti mana drepta, am nevoie de ea ca la mangai. Scopatete mi cu blante te su napi drept, trebuite sa mi hranes copilasul, lasate mi deoparte bicolo drept, ta sa pot lega na leganun procluing meu. Is a mess now with books and now when I came to America of course I wanted to come because I had much American culture from my father and I was curious to come here however I wrote this poem two halves midnight Half of my bed a white shroud, lit by a half moon that casts a cold look at me. I want to sleep, but can't. A half moon. Its other half lights my mother's grave, far off in the Balkans. Half pensive, half delirious, 
I cry in halves, separated by the dividing line of centuries. Half despair, half hope, half here, half there. We are one in the semi-darkness of a half-severed moon. Now I am telling a short story about my mother. <laughs> my life was connected so with my mother. When my mother married with my father, he came from America in 1930, and he brought many gifts to her, but the most important gift was the American flag. And my father said, this is American flag, and you have to care, and you have to, to save her. Now, it was uh, Second World War, and uh, my mother, to, to hide this flag from German soldiers, they went in our, lived in our house, she put in a box, metal box, and uh, put under the soil in the garden. After Second World War, she took off this flag, but she never see, because, uh, you know, in my country, communist government, considered America enemy. So they did not like to see an American flag. So she put between two blankets and quilt, and she covered my bed. So when I was little girl, I slept covered by American flag, and I did not know nothing. <laughs> One time I was jumping in the bed, and I saw between blankets a star. And I cried, Mama, Mama, I started in my blanket. She came, she fixed, and <laughs> hiding and fixing this. She embraced me and she said, Rosie, today you saw the first star, but maybe some days you will see more stars. So later I saw more stars in American flag and more stars in American nation. Now, maybe you know or not, but Mother Teresa is from Albania. She was born in Albania, and later she went in India. But uh, Albanian communists closed the churches, so they did not like her. I wrote a poem in English and in Albanian for her. It's long, but I'm reading only some verses. Mother Teresa, the proof that the soul purifies itself as much as it closeness to the holiness of God. O oh, Mother, O oh, Lantern of Love, you encoded the connection of your spirit to God in your body and in others by picturing even heaven into people's souls. In innumerable avenues of love, now you reside in paradise, sending blessing. Hallelujah. Mother Teresa, Mother Albania, yours and mine, common homeland, gives me the right to deceive the hieroglyphs of furrows on your face, cut by tears of thousands of Albanian mothers. Mother Teresa, came into this world, helped. Sometimes she struggled in vain. Now she works from the heaven. Caritas and Amor ibi est. It's a short poem for Richard Gere. When Richard Gere smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Gere say, I cry every chance I get. But when he smiles, the red moon closes its eyes. The snow melts from Himalaya hills, and Tibet changes its colors to green. <laughs> he is 11 days old and lolls against my milk-soaked gown as I dawdle at the nursery window, reluctant to lay him down, choosing instead to savor the play of his pink fingers curled into a fist around my thumb. 
Outside the world continues, much as it always has. The school bus collects its children. Green leaves give way to red. And flocks of eager geese pass raucously overhead. I cannot keep him from his journey, nor in good conscience would I try. Yet, perhaps, five summers can stretch on and on and linger, and not, as the others warn, in a blink of this tiny perfect eye, be gone. Thank you. Visitations at this inconvenient hour. Dawn's morning sunrise shows ribbon by ribbon as mysterious spirits arrive, then enter my mind, trailing ghosts of Christmas past. All this flowing bright sunlight whispers expectations of birth. It's Advent. Thank you very much.